Rex's friend is here to play. Woo ha! <laughs> He's loving his butt rub. Look at him wagging his tail. <laughs> Like that butt rope, buddy? Hey, Rexy! So we're out driving around and looking for properties that are for sale, looking for areas that might be like something worth going after. We're not necessarily driving around, driving around. We went out for breakfast because Maddie wasn't feeling overly good this morning and I worked all night. So we just had to go get some breakfast. Then we're, tr then we're just like kind of taking the uh, roundabout way back because we don't have our engine parts. So, Go on. We see this house, and I'm like, oh, that looks that looks like it's reasonable for, like, our budget, you know, whatever. And it's got a for sale, a realtor, like, for sale sign in front of the house. So, we pull in the driveway, and this guy's outside, and he will goes in. The guy that's outside goes in, this other guy comes out, and Nick's looking at me, and he's like, there's curtains up on the windows, right? And it's kind of run down a little bit, and he's like, man, this kind of looks like it might be a drug house, like... I don't know, all these all these guys coming in and out of the house, whatever, and like the, like sheets hung up on the windows, and we're like, oh, well, like, where are we? And so this guy comes out, and Nick rolls down the window, and he goes, hey, man, are you guys selling? Selling the, selling the house, Nick. Like, say you're asking for the house, not for freaking drugs that you just thought might be in the house. Like, maybe be a little more specific. So the guy ran back in the house. <laughs> he wasn't, uh... He wasn't too sure about that, but somebody else came out who was probably the actual homeowner and Nick talked to him for a second, so it's under contract. <laughs> After all of that, the house is under contract. To the left here? Yeah. I thought it was kind of funny. Not when you're in an unfamiliar area. I mean, we're good. I, I understand. Not much after that. <laughs> They're kind of funny though. I think that guy was going in the, like, uh, like, in retrospect, I think it was a drug house. Right? Could have been. Like, I think that's the only house we passed that was, like, a couple sketchy characters. The homeowner seemed, like, fine. Fine, but, like, yeah. there's a couple other sketchy characters, and, like, I don't know. We made it out of all, all the windows covered. We survived. We're survivors. We might not be prospering yet, but we're surviving. Prospering? Was uh, it right? Yeah. That's a nice little place. It's a business. Yeah, but it like it was, it was a builder's business. like yeah, builder's business. So it's cool. Well, let's check out this industrial park. It might be a good test spot. the fan blowing and Maddie's gonna stand up one of the fan because she's got a little bun in her oven but um I'm probably worth more dead than alive so no I'm just joking guys we got the wind blowing uh the wind the prevailing winds are going that way we got the wind blowing this way uh just to keep all the uh the fumes out of the way uh we're making a couple weight balance bars sexy rexy get out of there he was out visiting the ducks a little bit earlier I did get a little bit of a video they're out here hanging out. Um, they may or may not have lead poisoning now, the ducks, because they're just like standing here downwind. What? The ducks. You didn't like chase them off? Yeah, I did. Well, they just wanted to be my friend. Yeah. I don't know. I got no ducking idea. Uh -huh. Already with the dad jokes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't even on dad yet. Oh, maybe I am. I don't know. So, here's my ladle. That I made. Nice. Fancy. It leaks. And uh, the cool thing about lead is. I see you're it's, wearing proper safety equipment. Yeah. Gloves, sandals. Um, I just picked off the pieces that were stuck in my leg. But the mm -hmm. cool thing about lead is it uh, cools down very, very fast when it's in splatter form. So Liquid form. Burned. It, uh, it's not that bad. Not like oil burns. Oil burns suck. 
because they stay hot for a long time. Well, over here, this was another thing I was doing. Um, the running board, uh, unfortunately, uh, somewhere between 1933 and 2022, uh, they threw the running boards out for the homegrown, natural born hustler, straight gangster. I like straight gangster better. I think I like, you're, I'm liking straight gangster too. We're throwing the other name out. We're gonna throw the other name out? Put it in the archives. Straight gangster. Right now it's the natural born hustler because like nothing's going right. Somebody said the baby but, is the natural born hustler. Maybe. <laughs> So like straight gangster, this thing's going to be straight gangster as soon as we can get. Dot dot. I don't even. Know. I don't even want. To. I'm not going there. It's Once close. we get this car done, it's not even like our fault, like our doing. I know. But but once we get this car done, I'm telling you, it's gonna be straight gangster. It's gonna have the looks, and within one month, this car. Give me two months, and we'll win a race with it. Mark my words with it. Give me two months. Today is April, no, no, August. One of those A's. Once it starts. Oh. Like once we get it running. Oh, okay. can't start today. I'm glad you clarified that. We got a motor that has 10 pounds of oil pressure. We can't, we can't, we can't start that today. Yeah. Unless we want to go knock the rods out of this thing the first pass. All right, so you're making. Weight balance bars. Weight balance bars. Well, I'm really close to being over the top here. You almost overfilled it? Oh, man. You dumb dumb. Oh, oh, oh. So is it not melted all the way? I'm so confused. Well, it took too long. It started cooling down? No. Oh. I recommend next time you do a smaller batch. Well, this was the last of it because I was like, I'm already done. I gotta make one last one, so I just do the rest of the last one. Does it always look like that, or is uh -oh. it? Oh, normally it's all molten. Well, why don't you wait a little bit then? No, the problem was the, my ladle got too cold. Yeah. So the ladle has a lot of square inches of hot, hot surface. So since the ladle wasn't hot, yeah. Normally I could dip it in there, right? Yeah. And the ladle was like already warm, so it just slides in there. Right now, like right now, it's just it's like it's not even hot. Right now. So we can just go in there. And just out. Okay. We're gonna have to cut this. I'm over here looking like a jackass now. My ladle got too cold. So, guys, if the ladle is too cold, is that what you call them? Yeah, I'd say that's a ladle. If your ladle is too cold, then the aluminum or the lead that melts at 640 something degrees, right? Clings to it. So, if my lead is molten at, let's say, 650 degrees, like it starts melting at 640, so like it was probably 650, 670 degrees in there under 700 i'd imagine so when i put in my ladle that was 65 degrees yeah. not 65 degrees 90 degrees whatever it is out here 100 yeah. degrees out here Whew. and that lead whoop, cools down extremely very quickly and if it's just at the threshold where it's only 20 30 degrees above melting temperature well then well, guess what happens it clings to it and it, yeah. it's not liquid anymore so. See? See how it's getting shiny? No, you're kind of in the way. Well, bring the camera over here. I'm getting that close. What? I'm not getting that close. 
You can't get lead poisoning in like a day. I don't care. I got the fan keeping everything blowing away, and I'm standing back here. We'll be back. That's kind of cool. There you go. Nice. Good job. It's still warm, isn't it? I know, I could see like steam coming off of it. Take two. Take two. Take two. Is it a problem that it's leaking on the hose for the propane? It's cool by the time it hits the hose. All right. It's like heat of evaporation is like, like if it's in a, like, if it's what's called it, if it's encompassed by a whole bunch of other ones, well then yeah, it's going to stay hot for a while. Very well insulated. Oh yeah, and you said lead cools really quick. Two more done. We still have some lead left in there, so I don't know. 
Well, we'll go make a small one. So real quick to wrap up this video, Kenny came over with a chainsaw and they cut up pieces off of this chunk of lead. Uh, we got that lead from Eric Yost over at Customs by Biggin and I got to take what's remaining back to him and uh, get squared away with him for what we ended up buying or using. Um, anyways, so Nick and Kenny cut slivers off of that block of lead. I had nothing to do with really any of the project because I didn't want to be exposed to the lead. So I stayed back on this one. Um, once they had cut the chunks of lead off, Nick decided that he was going to melt it down and put it into <coughs> um, little casings, basically. Uh, so he found some scrap metal that was laying around the shop, welded a cap on the end of it, filled it up. Once it was all cool, welded a cap on the other end. So we are able to add and take away weight um, based on like each piece of metal that's got lead in it. Uh, I don't know how much each of these weigh, but we've got a box back here at the end of the truck and we're just test fitting everything. Um, Nick welded up this box. It's pretty thick and heavy solid on its own just so that it has the ability to hold. <clears throat> Dang. <clears throat> it's got the ability to hold the weight whatever we decide to put in it. Um, and then we're able to secure the weight as well. Um, it's not going to move around. It's not going to, you know, get slide back and forth. It fits really good um, width-wise in this box here. So, uh, yeah, we've got a couple of these guys that um, we're able to put where we need it depending on the surface that we're running. So, I don't really understand all of the intricacies of it, but front side and back side and you know the the type of surface that you're racing on all changes from race to race basically so the where you want the weight and how you want the weight um to benefit you the most is going to change as well now the other thing that um they were working on like the belly pan um we might have the lifter situation sorted out for the motor so that we can get this thing finally running making some test hits, and I think with how long we've waited, we might just wait a couple more days and do the gender reveal back home in New York, um, because it would mean a lot to me for our, our family to be there for it, and I've already waited this long, so a couple extra days really isn't going to hurt me, um, but we haven't finally decided on that just yet. Um, I'll show you a little sneak peek. The dash is getting fitted. The factory dash is going to be in the car and the Holly dash is going to be up in it as well. So that'll be pretty cool. Nick had that in the homegrown hustler. So for us to be able to make it work in this car, um, it just, it looks really cool that it fits so perfectly in the homegrown hustler and it's going to fit really nice in this car too. Um, what else? I don't really think there's a whole lot that we're doing or that we're waiting on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna be uh, hopefully starting it up soon. So we will be excited to share that with you guys. I know a lot of you guys are also waiting on seeing the car start up for the first time watching it drive down like nick's gonna just you know drive down the street make sure all the steering is good make sure the brakes work just right um we're gonna do the burnout gender reveal we got to get a bunch of testing in because we expected at this point to already have uh a couple weekends worth of racing which is like additional test passes essentially um under our belt so I don't know what the plan is for this weekend, but I know next week we will be heading up to New York. Um, 
JJ is putting on a race August 19th and 20th um, up at Empire Dragway. That's like Leicester, New York. Um, and that's the closest race that we've really able to be a part of because it's it's close to what we do. Um, that's also close to our family. So we're going to give um, any of our friends and family in New York an opportunity to come out to the track, hang out, watch the car make some passes, see it for the first time. Um, so if you're going to be around August 19th and 20th, I guess small tires on, it's a Friday, Saturday deal. Small tires on Friday, big tire is on Saturday. Um, but we'll, we, we have to f decide officially, but we might be there Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday for sure. And then, I don't know what else is going on after that. So. Hopefully. We've got a couple days to get the rest of this figured out. The lifters and make sure the motor's happy. Um, but hopefully this is going to fix our issue. And we'll be good to go from here. So we'll see. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Subscribing to our YouTube channel. Buying merchandise. Uh, everybody who reaches out supports us in any way, shape, or form. Like... Even for, we get messages every once in a while of parents telling us, you know, their little kids are, uh, got to sit in one of the cars in the past and, you know, it left a lasting impression. So different memories like that or different things that we can do for the kids to help grow the sport and help keep it alive. Um, we're always trying to do what we can for the kids. It's the future of drag racing. So... This thing will be pretty cool. We'll get some, uh, we'll get some kids, you know, sitting in the driver's seat of this one as well. Um, and we should, we should be making some good hits pretty soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, uh, we'll catch you next time.